This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1318, When Commissions Matter and When They Don't, by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. Welcome to another Sunday edition of Optimal Finance Daily. I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the podcast where I read to you from some of the best blogs in the world, with their permission, of course. And if you like today's episode, you'll probably enjoy our other shows on topics like health, relationships, and personal development. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in your podcast app to find them. But let's jump right into today's post and start optimizing your life. When commissions matter and when they don't by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. Commissions are a fact of life for investors, but are there times when they don't really matter? You might be surprised to know that yes, there are times when commissions have a significant impact on your investment and times when they don't. Commissions are always a drag on investments. It's just a matter of how much. In this article, we'll learn how to identify scenarios in which commissions can have a significant impact on your portfolio's performance and when you shouldn't care as much about commissions. When commissions matter. Let's look at a few different scenarios where commissions have a large impact on investment returns. Small accounts. When you have a small account, everything is amplified. This includes losses. Here's an example. Account size, $5,000. Purchase 100 shares of ABC at $30 a share, so $3,000. Sell all shares at $25, so $2,500. Round trip buy and sell commissions, $13.90 at E-Trade. The account has realized a $500 loss. That's a 16.6% loss on the account, which is a significant amount. What about commissions? While $13.90 seems like a small amount, what happens when the account does 10 round trip trades and nets only $250? 10 trades cost $139. On a $5,000 account, that's 2.78%. With just 20 trades, 5.5% of the account has already been eaten up by commissions. To put it another way, $139 is over 55% of the profit. Contrast that with a $50,000 account. $139 is only 0.278% of the account value. 20 trades aren't even 1% of the account. Going back to our 10 trades at $139, the $50,000 account is 10 times higher than the $5,000 account. Let's say its profits on those 10 trades are 10 times or $2,500. $139 is only 5.6% of the profit. It's difficult enough to make money with a small account, but once commissions are factored in, it's nearly impossible. Abnormally high fees. Just like buying a home, you want to get a good price and not overpay. That's done by knowing what the surrounding home prices are. The same can be said for commissions. Online trades shouldn't cost more than $10, with many around $5 there isn't any reason to pay more for online trades. Deteriorating returns. If you have a nice size account and are getting good rates on your commissions, but they're still eating into your returns, what might be the reason? This can usually happen due to the frequency of trading. You don't have to be a day trader for commissions to eat away at returns, but being an active investor can have a negative impact on your returns. One way to avoid jumping into and out of funds is to simply invest in index tracking funds. These funds and ETFs track popular indexes such as the S&P 500. Basically, they do the work for you and help keep commissions low because you aren't trading as much. Your advisor is fee only. If you are working with a fee only financial advisor but find you are being charged commissions on different products, the advisor isn't fee only. Fee-only advisors should not charge commissions. However, if your advisor is fee-based, he might charge a flat fee for advising, but then charge a percentage of AUM, which is assets under management, for managing your investments. For AUM, a fee-only advisor simply charges a flat fee to manage investments. When commissions don't matter. Turning to the other side of the table, there are times when commissions aren't a factor and are just part of investing assuming the commissions are reasonable. 
you're having great success. Whether you're investing on your own or having an investment advisor do it, when you're having great success, commissions tend to go unnoticed. After all, outsized profits decrease the percentage impact of commissions. Day traders are one group that rack up a huge amount of commissions. While four out of five lose money, one in a hundred is profitable. In this case, those who are winning are doing so because of the volume of trades. Paying higher commissions when it's an emergency. When you have to get out of or into a trade immediately but don't have access to a computer, making a call to your broker and doing a phone-assisted trade might be your only choice. Phone-assisted trades are expensive, with many costing $25, but with no other option, the high commission doesn't outweigh the need to complete a timely transaction. Percentage of AUM. As mentioned previously, some financial advisors will charge a commission as a percentage of AUM. The commission rate drops at different stages as AUM increases. Your advisor is a fiduciary. A fiduciary should have your best interest in mind, but this doesn't exclude advisors from charging a commission, even under the DOL's new fiduciary rule. Merrill Lynch has even set up a model where some clients are charged fees only while others are charged commission. Andy Sieg, the head of Merrill Lynch Wealth Management said, quote, we have analyzed the limited situations where recommending a fee-based arrangement might not be in a client's best interest and have considered alternatives to IAP, which is Investment Advisory Program, for these situations, end quote. Final thoughts. Knowing when to avoid or reduce commissions can certainly increase your investment returns. However, there are still some scenarios where the commissions you are receiving don't matter as much especially when they fall within the range of reasonable cost. You just listened to the post titled When Commissions Matter and When They Don't by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. Now, I found this article interesting because I never really considered commissions before. I personally don't use a financial advisor. And when it comes to investing, I'm focused on a buy and hold strategy because I'm a pretty passive investor. My curiosity about this article led me to another article on the College Investor site. It's called How to Get Started in Trading Stocks. While this article acknowledges that trading gets a bad rap and is compared to gambling, it makes a pretty compelling point that most buy and hold investors lack an exit strategy. Here's a quote from that article that I found interesting. A good trader will never take a trade that doesn't have a predetermined entry price protective stop loss, and target. This means that the potential outcomes of the trade are already known before the trade is ever taken. How many investors genuinely know what their exit strategy is before they enter the investment? Virtually none, end quote. Now, I'm not saying I'm gonna start day trading tomorrow, but perhaps I'm a little less dismissive of the concept. And that's another weekend edition of Optimal Finance Daily in the books. Thanks so much for your support and for listening every day, of course. Have a great rest of your weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.